There is just something about a good glass of wine, and some mighty fine wine is being produced right here in North Carolina. In fact, what is happening in our state's wine industry is nothing short of phenomenal. In 1980, North Carolina had just two wineries. Only one was producing wine from the types of European grapes most wine drinkers are familiar with, like Chardonnay and Cabernet. The other was making wine from our state's native muscadine grape. So only two wineries in 1980, only eight in 1990, then 21 in 2000. But look what's happened since then. Today, there are 110 wineries in our state. I think the reason is that uh, North Carolina is pretty good at growing grapes and producing good quality wine. So let's take a quick wine tour of North Carolina. Our state's largest wine producer is Duplin Winery in Rose Hill. It makes muscadine wines. A little sweet taste of the really? south and that's what we have. Asheville's Biltmore Winery is the number two wine producer in our state, but it's number one in visitors because of its iconic tourist attraction. We're the most visited winery in the country. We've got over a million visitors coming through here every year. Calaboose Cellars in Andrews is our state's smallest winery. It's housed in an old jail. 300 square feet. That includes a bathroom. Calaboose's production room is also the bottling, shipping, and tasting room. We've had 18 in here, and the rest have to wait outside. Oh, that's Grandfather Mountain. <laughs> Banner Elk Winery is North Carolina's highest winery and vineyard. This is the highest vineyard in the eastern United States. It grows the same grapes grown in Europe's high elevations. So we found the kind of grapes that they grow over there, we brought them back here, and they're doing excellent. There are wineries along our coast, too, like vineyards on the Scuppernong. The winery is located right on the Scuppernong River. The river is named for the muscadine grape European settlers found growing on its banks centuries ago. We have uh, 15 different varieties of muscadines. The Yadkin Valley area here in the state's Piedmont has the most wineries. Raffaldini Vineyards is the only one specializing in Italian grapes. As far as I'm concerned, this area would challenge the West Coast hands down. Looks fantastic. Some wineries have restaurants, like the fine dining at Shelton Vineyards Harvest Grill. Seasonal, uh, with a lot of emphasis on using as much local product as possible. Some wineries have lodging, from bed and breakfast inns to cabins, even tree houses. Every winery has its own unique twist. Childress Vineyards in Lexington has a NASCAR flavor because of owner Richard Childress. We're very fortunate to have all the fans uh, really support our winery. Everything from A to Z would be up here at some point, either on one shelf or the other. Larry Ellers of Chateau Lorinda Vineyard in Sparta makes most of his wine from fruit other than grapes. We do blueberry wines, strawberry wines, plum wines. And cherries, raspberries, apples, pears, even cantaloupes. We use about every fruit that's common in the supermarket at one time or another. At Sanders Ridge Vineyard and Winery in Boonville, you can sip fine wine and you can ride a zip line. You can't ride the llamas here at Divine Llama Vineyards in East Bend. But the llama will carry your wine for you on a trek through the woods. You'll do that for me, buddy? Every winery has their own personality, their own uniqueness, but uh, we also um, are all striving for really good quality wine. And they're succeeding. The quality of our wine is continually getting better and better. Next, how the industry got this far. It's not easy. The one in the middle is the one that we believe is the original vine itself, which may date to about 1586. Everyone has a mother. So does North Carolina's wine industry. It's the mother vine in Manio. May be the oldest living grapevine in the world. It's a Scuppernong vine. Some say Indians planted it, European settlers found it, and some believe Thomas Jefferson used cuttings from it to establish one of the country's first commercial wineries. It's amazing, just amazing. Our 
state's progress to... Almost 200 years later, former state Senator Fountain Odom authored the bill that made the scuppernung North Carolina's official state fruit. It just is uh, easy to grow and it has a very good, sweet, natural taste to it and it also has unbelievable health benefits. That helped make muscadines the foundation of our state's new wine industry. Our state's first commercial winery made muscadine wine when it opened in Halifax County in 1835. In that period, 1830s, 1840s, 1850s, you saw a gradual growth of the industry. With lots of small wineries, almost all exclusively in the eastern part of the state. North Carolina led the nation in wine production. By the 1850s, our state had 25 wineries. But the Civil War wiped out our wine industry. Starting in the 1870s and 1880s, it sees a rebirth. And in part, it was, uh, it was encouraged because it was seen as a solution to rural poverty. By 1900, the state's wine industry was thriving again. Prohibition comes, destroys it. Many counties voted to stay dry after prohibition was repealed in 1933. So our state's wine industry struggled until the 1960s. There's a resurgent interest in the state concerning the role that wine production might play in alleviating rural poverty. And there was growing demand for our grapes from other states. The state of North Carolina was, you know, promoting to grow muscadine grapes and sell them to a big winery out of New York. Dave Fussell's dad couldn't pass up that winery's offer of $350 a ton for muscadine grapes, so he started planting them. And as we were waiting on our first big crop, the price fell to $125 a ton. So what in the world a whole bunch of Baptists gonna do with a bunch of grapes? Uh, we're Methodists now, and uh, got into the wine business. The Fussells opened Duplin Winery in 1975. As a little kid, I stomped grapes and licked labels, and we made 20 cases of wine the first year, and happened to sell it all. Duplin Winery now produces about 360,000 cases a year. We're the oldest and the largest winery in North Carolina. It's no surprise that Muscadine wine succeeds here. It's a native grape that is relatively easy to grow. And a lot of native North Carolinians like sweet Muscadine wine. The problem is, is that it doesn't necessarily produce the wine that most people associate with wine which is wine made from European vinifera grapes. The real problem with growing vinifera grapes in North Carolina is that every single known pest and disease that exists on vines exists in North Carolina. So it was a real, real struggle. That didn't stop Jack Crustalis and his wife Lillian. We wanted to grow the kind of grape that made the kind of wine we like to drink. In 1972, Jack planted an acre of European vinifera grapes on some land along the Yadkin River, just west of Winston-Salem. By 1988, we had 30 acres of vineyard, all planted in vinifera. We didn't know we weren't supposed to be growing Riesling and Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir. The vine is still growing. The Crustalis has decided to open a winery called West Bend Vineyards in 1988. The winery and Jack's Vineyard is still going today. He went uh, against what everybody told him he couldn't do, and that was kind of a challenge for him. North Carolina's wine industry gained momentum in 1972 when state lawmakers cut winery license fees and wine taxes. And when the Biltmore Company opened a $6.5 million winery on the grounds of its estate in 1985, it exposed tourists from around the world to some of our wine. So the opportunity for them to be in North Carolina, taste wine that they like, buy, choose to buy wine that they like, I think sets them up very nicely for visiting other wineries and being, oh yes, you can grow grapes in North Carolina. Yes, North Carolina wine can be good. In 1986, the state created the North Carolina Wine and Grape Council to help support the industry with marketing. And in 1990, grape growers and winemakers created the North Carolina Wine Growers Association to help each other with knowledge. How to get started, um, some of the trials and tribulations, some of the mistakes that have, people have made to try to avoid that and uh, minimize the costs. The Wine Growers Association started with 20 members. Now we have probably about 400 members. Next, just how did that happen in such a short period of time? We are where California was after 20 years.
It seems like there's a new winery opening every month in North Carolina. We went from eight wineries to 110 in just 20 years. So how did that happen so fast? Charles and Ed Shelton are part of the answer. They retired from their successful Charlotte-based construction business and opened Shelton Vineyards in Dobson in 2000. Well, we tell people that we lost our mind. <laughs> But their minds were focused on making their home county a nationally recognized wine producing region. They helped get the Yadkin Valley federally designated as an American Viticulture Area or AVA. Since then, two more AVAs have been established, the Swan Creek and Hall River Valley AVAs. What the AVA says is that uh, basically the, the grapes uh, that are grown within the AVA are significantly different than the grapes that are grown outside of the, the AVA. That gives our AVA wineries a federal stamp of approval that's valuable for marketing. And then when you get to the road, just turn on that PTO and open those valves and you'll be good. Support from Shelton's and the Golden Leaf Foundation also helped establish a viticulture and enology program at Surrey Community College in 1999. Viticulture is the science of growing wine grapes and enology is the science of making wine. A lot of people who have uh, been there to school, graduated, have their own winery now. The school has its own working vineyard and winery. The Sheltons helped fund a new $5 million center for viticulture and enology at Surrey Community College in 2010. I think it was necessary for the development of the industry, not only in this area, but this re the whole region. It makes a statement. We mean business. Surrey probably has a tie to nearly every winery in the state. Take a hydrometer and just use this tip and mix it around in your juice. Students come from all over the country, but most end up working in North Carolina. Many have degrees in other fields and were lured into the wine industry. And so they were able to come here, get the hands on, and then immediately go to work or start a business. Put your grapevine in there, tie your vines up with it. Frank Hobson went to Surrey Community College to learn about growing wine grapes. It was a challenge, lots of I didn't know, and as we live and learn how to treat the vines and what to expect we get better with growing them and stuff. Frank's wife Lena went to Surrey to learn about operating a tasting room and marketing a winery. They were such leaders in stepping out and saying this can be great for our area and we want to be a part of it and we want to be supportive of it. The Hobsons opened Rag Apple Lassie Vineyards in 2002. We were farmers. First, dairy farmers. Rag Apple Lassie was Frank's 4-H show calf. Then they were tobacco farmers. We was growing about 130 acres of tobacco. After the decline of tobacco, the Hobsons wanted to keep their land in farming and decided to try wine grapes. Nothing else comes close to replacing the economic value of tobacco. But the Hobsons didn't convert all their farmland to vineyards. We still grow tobacco and soybeans and corn and wheat and stuff. That's what most large farmers switch their tobacco fields to. But many smaller landowners either started growing wine grapes or sold their land to people who did. The farmers didn't become the winemakers, but the land subsequently became available for wineries. As North Carolina became known as a wine producer, it started drawing the attention of wealthy investors. Experts say that's essential to the industry's growth. This is a wine I want you to smell before you drink it because the aromatics are incredible. Jay Raffaldini is one of those investors. Right now, I currently work on Wall Street. He planted a vineyard in Rhonda in 2001 and opened Raffaldini Vineyards and Winery in 2004. I was this New Yorker coming down, and there was this view that I didn't know what I was doing. But winemaking has been in Raffaldini's family for more than 600 years. He says the climate here is like his family's native Tuscany. So the history of wine growing is here, and the climate is here. Raffaldini says the most important thing to have is long-term vision, just like any successful Wall Street investor. We're always looking at blackberries, walking ahead. That if you lift your head up, you can see the horizon, and you're able to make better decisions because of that. So what's on the horizon for North Carolina's wine industry? Who's to say that 30 years from now that one of the best wines in the world can't be from North Carolina?
To learn more about the WREL documentary, Grape Expectations, and North Carolina's wine industry, visit WREL.com and type WREL Doc in the search box. As North Carolina's wine industry grows, so does its economic impact. It's now about a $1.3 billion industry. It employs 7,600 North Carolinians, and it generates about $51 million in local and state tax revenue. We stock about five different types of corks. Not all of that business is just wine production. This is a hydraulic press. Gil Owens runs Carolina Wine Supply in Yadkinville. It's right in the heart of wine country. He sells everything from crushers to corks. Everything used in a winery. This is one of dozens of businesses that have sprouted with the growing wine industry. First four or five years, we more than doubled in size each year. Like the grapes they grow, wineries thrive in bunches. Because the more wineries there are, the more it attracts people to come to visit the wineries. We had 31,000 people come through the door last year. We have visitors who have been here from every state in the United States and several foreign countries. We're going to taste everything today, so you're going to test your palates out. The state's new wine, wine tourism wine, industry wine, has hatched wine, businesses wine, like Yadkin wine, Valley wine, wine Tours. We are a pure tourism company. Here at Childress, this is a multi-million dollar facility. Tour customers are driven to four wineries. They get free tastings, lunch, and an education in wine. We consider ourselves a wine education class on wheels. Anybody who has any interest in doing anything entrepreneurial in this area has the opportunity. We want everybody to be comfortable. Chip and Sandy Thomas saw an opportunity to open a bed and breakfast in Yadkinville. It caters to wine tourists. Probably 75% of our marketing is toward that. They named their B&B the Vintage Inn. Just kind of fit. There's a lot going on. Their inn's guests are very close to the Yadkin Valley's 34 wineries. They'll get up and have my breakfast, of course, and then they'll start touring the touring wineries. And typically they'll do three to four. Hampton and Sweet, Shelton Vineyards. Is Shelton Vineyards built its own Hampton Inn, Italian restaurant and gas station and convenience store just down the road from its winery. It's all to serve the increasing number of tourists visiting its winery and others in the valley. If you build it, they will come, mm. uh, and that's what will happen here. But it's not all rosé for our state's wine industry. It faces challenges if it wants to continue to grow. One is large wine producers from California, South America, and Australia filling grocery store shelves with wine that costs less than $10 a bottle. We are a small family-owned wineries, so we can't sell it at $3 a bottle or $5 a bottle. It's been aged in uh, French oak for two years. Steve Shepard is not only the president of the state's Wine Growers Association, he's also the general manager and winemaker at Ray Lynn Vineyards in Moxville. He says more North Carolinians buying more North Carolina wine could really help the industry grow. We're producing the wines right here and we're providing jobs right here. I mean, it's something that, uh, you know, I think needs to be really taken into consideration when you're making your wine selections. Many winemakers say the quality of our state's wine is good and getting better every year. Mm. Many wine drinkers agree. I like that. Including this couple from Napa Valley, California, who are here trying North Carolina wine. Very good. So far, so good. Yeah, yes. very good, very good. North Carolina's wine industry needs that message to be heard through the grapevine. It's not that difficult to grow grapes. It's fairly straightforward to make the wine. It's really hard to sell wine. Selling the wine is always going to be the biggest problem. A California winemaker by the name of Robert Mondavi once had that very same problem. He went to New York and people laughed at him because he had California wine. They don't laugh about California wines anymore. And I see us doing the same thing with North Carolina wines. Those are great expectations for North Carolina grapes and wine.